So for today's piece, I've got this old antique china cabinet. I picked this up from a local thrift store here. Uh, I've been eyeballing it for a while, so I finally went ahead and bit the bullet and got it. From a distance, it's not in too bad of condition. Uh, when you get a lot closer to it, then it tells a different story. The uh, the veneer damage on this is is just bad everywhere. Uh, the doors, drawers, the sides, everything. Uh, a lot of the trim, the little decorative trim is missing and broken. Uh, the lower door, it looks like someone had uh, had pried the, the old lock out of it at some point and took a chunk of the door with it. Uh, the inside is, uh, it's got some some mold issues inside that needs to be uh, to be addressed and cleaned out. So to get everything started, Felicia is going to go ahead and give this thing a good scrub and wash down uh, so we can actually see through all the dust and dirt and filth that's on this thing uh, what we have to work with. After a good wipe down, we're going to go ahead and start dismantling this and taking all the hardware off of it. So after I had it removed, I went ahead and appointed Felicia the daunting task of scrubbing, cleaning, buffing, polishing, all that old, dirty, nasty, disgusting brass hardware. So while Felicia's hard at work, I figured I'd just pop in and check and see how she's doing. Alright, enough goofing around. I have to address this door that's got this chunk of wood missing out of it. Uh, basically all I'm doing is just using a pencil and a square and I'm just squaring off the perimeter of the, of the hole in the door there where the lock was broken out of it. So for fixing pieces that have, uh, that have damage like this where an actual chunk of the wood is missing, uh, I know the popular choice is to grab wood fillers, Bondo, and just pile it in there and fix it. I get it, it's quick, it's easy, it's fast, uh, but I don't do that on our pieces. You know, I've used it all the time for veneer damage and cracks, uh, but there's another way to fix this, and I'm going to show you how we do it here. Okay, so after I got the door laid out, I just moved it over to the bandsaw and just followed my lines that I made and cut that damaged area out of the door. Next, I just used a small scrap of wood and just cut out a square the same size as the opening I cut in the door. Next, I just stuck our chunk of wood in that door, put some wood glue on it, and then sanded it smooth. Afterwards, then I'll take some Bondo and I'll fill in any gaps or cracks that may be showing. Okay, now to tackle this trim. My idea was just to pop all this old broken missing trim off and just not replace it, just leave it without it and just paint it and be done with it. But my wife had different ideas, and you know how that goes. I've been overruled, so now I'll be remaking all of this custom trim. So making this trim wasn't actually the hard part. Uh, what I did is I took some pine scraps I had laying around the shop, and I put it up on the bandsaw, and I cut them to basically about the size of a matchstick. The next part was a bit daunting. I had to hand sand each one of these strips on all four sides. Okay, this part of the process was actually the hardest. Gluing and clamping these to the doors, even though I made them out of pine so they're somewhat flexible, following those contours, they just kept snapping. I know I had to remake about four or five of these pieces. So while I was busy being aggravated by all that tiny trim work, Felicia was hard at work going over the entire piece using 220 grit sandpaper. Next, we have to tackle the issue of the missing feet. This was the only intact foot under the cabinet. One was missing and two were broken half. So I'm taking the one complete foot and I'm just going to trace it out in a piece of three quarter inch pine. After I finish tracing out my patterns, I just take them to the bandsaw and cut them out. With all four feet cut out, I'm going to take them to the router table and put profiles on all the edges. I was able to match them almost exactly. With our new replacement feet in hand, I'm going to go ahead and attach them back to the cabinet using some wood glue and brad nails. Time for the fun part. I'm using Dally's two-part wood bleach mixed in equal parts. My plan is to update this cabinet a little bit, 
So in order to do that, I've got to get rid of this orange mahogany toned wood that's on here. Uh, the only piece I'm going to be wood bleaching is this top that separates the two cabinets and I want to bleach it down to almost a light maple color. This is how our top came out after two treatments of the wood bleach. Finally, now that we have all those repairs done, Felicia is going to give it a good wipe down and get it all cleaned up before we move it into the paint booth. We got it all taped up and ready for primer. I'm going to start off using the Zinser Bullseye 123 Primer. The sprayer that I'm using is the Graco 360 DSP Airless Sprayer. This spray gun is fantastic. It'll spray the thickest paints without having to thin them down. And you could turn this gun in any direction, even upside down, and it will never skip a beat. Now, probably a bunch of you are yelling at your TV right now. You idiot! You should have used shellac. You're going to get bleed through. Well, you know, I knew I was going to get bleed through, but I wasn't worried about it. And this is the reason why. The color that I'm using is limousine leather black and the bare cabinet enamel with a satin finish. Here I'm just using the airbrush gun to lightly paint all these tiny trim pieces that hold the glass in to the top of the hutch doors. After they dried, I just went ahead and assembled the doors back with the glass and all the trim pieces to hold it in. Next I just went ahead and added all the hardware back to the upper and lower cabinet doors. I used a sheet of sanded thin plywood and then poly coated it for the back of the cabinet and then attached it using tack nails. This is a finished back after it was in place. Now before I show you the finished piece, let's take a look back at this old tired china hutch that we started with. Well here it is. I absolutely love the way this piece turned out. We were able to repair and restore all those little tiny antique embellishments that made this china hutch what it was, and then refinish it and give it a modern feel. Let me know what you guys think. Leave it in the comments below, and once again, thanks for watching.